Welcome back, everybody, to the Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB The Show 23. So, just less than two weeks left, and you know what? We're going to sit through some of these games, see where we fall, probably go around the Philadelphia series, and see where we are in the standings, division, wild card. We are hoping to obviously still win the division. We have a two-game lead over Chicago right now. Um, they really haven't been playing very well either. You see the Giants have lost four in a row, even though they have a three-game lead in that first wild card spot. Cubs, Padres, and the Phillies, who are 2-8 and eight in their last 10, uh, they're right there about a half game out. But we're going to lose this first game to Cincinnati in the series. We've got to try to take two, at least two out of three here. Let's go to game number two of this series. We're going to win it 9-0. Looks like Waka gets the win. Uh, he only only allowed seven hits in the whole game. Look, four, we got nine runs, 14 hits. You got Unio Cruz, four ribbies. You got like Wyatt Freeham, maybe hit a grand slam. Waka, eight and two-thirds, seven hits, seven Ks. Very good game. He's been pitching a lot better as of late. Bubba Chandler for game number three. We only lose 14 to five. Cincinnati looks like they scored six in the first. Man, I think Chandler got absolutely rocked. He did. Two-thirds of an inning, didn't get out of the first. Six earned, three walks. Priester and Hunter Brown didn't really you know, do much better than him. And game number one against the San Francisco series, we're going to lose it too. So we've now lost three out of our last four games. Two games left in the series. And also, I believe the minor league season is about to end, so we might check out the stats there. Game two against San Francisco, we went 4-2. to two. Definitely needed a victory. Marcano with a home run. Luis Ortiz gets win number nine, six innings. Eight Ks, no earned allowed, and two hits, four walks. Game three, we're going to lose nine to three. So we just lost two or three to San Francisco. All right. That, I would say pretty much I would say San Francisco's probably got that the first wild card locked up now. Yeah, Lopez and Brown did not fare too well. So now the minor league season is going to come to an end. Curve did not make it. Let's take a look at these AAA stats before they get erased. So I want to see what Brian Chang, Mark DeHotta did. So Chang led with hits 137. Sawinski actually led with 22 home runs. Castro with 20. Tejada with 18. And Chang with 18. Yeah, I mean, Mark Tejada is definitely going to be a shot next year to make the team. Brian Chang might get an invite to spring. I don't think he's going to be on the team next year. There's no really reason to rush him. I think he's going to be playing another year in AAA. And hopefully just continues to improve and has... An outstanding season where it really gives us no choice but to bring him up. But yeah, Tejada, I believe, is ready to go. Uh, he, he's just played his minor league career so far. has been absolutely fantastic. And I think next year he's pretty much got an outfield spot waiting for him. As for pitchers, Anthony Solomedo, 14 wins. Same with Will Cousins. They pitched really well this season. So did this whole AAA staff. I mean, Perdomo's very good. Everybody out of the bullpen. Moya, Schnell, K K uh, Kalish, all good. So that is really good to see. I think Solomedo has a possibly chance to make the rotation next year. I would say Will Cousins, same thing. I think he's like a Brian Chang situation. We just kind of let him sit in AAA, see what he can do, and then we go from there. If he's continuing to dominate and we really have no choice, we're going to have to bring him up and give him a shot. I don't want to use – obviously we have enough guys now where we can use maybe for trade bait and bring in a superstar, but – I want to trust in these guys. I want to see what they could do. We drafted them. You know, they've been here. I want to see what these guys can do and give them a real chance. So we got six games left in the season. Three at Philadelphia and then ending with that Chicago series just like last year. Before that, Hunter Brown, send him back down to AAA. He is definitely continuing to struggle. And Contreras, we're giving him another shot. But this time, it's just going to be out of the bullpen. I've seen success with him out of the bullpen. So I, we're not going to give him any starts. Just bring him out of the pen, see what he can do. So we're going to do a quick manage here. And if we have to jump into the game, that's what we're going to do. Two. Eh, see if we can get any more. Now we'll just get two in the first. We got Waka on the mound. He had a nice game last time. Hope we can have another one here against a really good Philadelphia lineup. I believe they are number one in home runs in the majors. Bases loaded. We get a run there. There you go. Andy Rodriguez with a bases clearing double. We got a 6-0 lead here in this game. So a good lead for Waka. And hopefully he can just shut it down. But there's a three-run shot. Wyatt Freehan add to the lead. 9-0 lead. Everything looking good in this game. Waka still rolling in there. I think we're going to keep him in the ninth. 
Rodriguez fly out. Let's go to the ninth. Can Walker just finish this up? He can. There you go. 9-2 victory against Philadelphia. Waka goes complete. Wyatt Freehand, 5 RBI in this game with the home run. 9 innings, 13 Ks, 9 hits, 2 earned. Win number 9 for Michael Waka. Game number 2, Quinn Priester is on the mound. And you know what? Let's get into this game. And actually, this is since the patch. So there you go. We have the City Connect jerseys. For this Pirates team, obviously love to debut these things in a home game, but we don't really have a home game unless it's going to be the playoffs. So that's not guaranteed. So when to get these in, I really think these uniforms are pretty good. I like them. You know, obviously, uh, the black pants, I think they have an obsession with the black pants. Same with the Orioles and the Reds. So it must be something about it. But I think it works out perfectly. So I, I do definitely dig these uniforms. So... Let's get into this game. We have a chance here. We can beat Philadelphia. We're going to be a game closer to possibly maybe clinching the division. We'll see what the Cubs are up to. Here comes Cruz of the plate, and he'll foul that one away. You can see one home run from 100. One two pitch to Cruz. And Cruz is going to ground this one over to second base. Should be an easy play over to first base and gets Cruz. Nothing for us there in the first inning. And we'll go to that bottom half of the first. And Quinn Priester on the mound. So. Obviously, this would have been Bubba Chandler, but obviously since the last start, just we're going to sit him down. Priester, another young pitcher, but we're going to give him a shot to have a nice shutdown game. We'll see. This is a huge spot for a young pitcher, and I love it. I want to see what these guys and how they perform in these spots. And there you go. 221 home runs this season. Harper, Schwarber, Chrome, Boom. I mean, Trey Turner, they can all just crush the ball. 3-2 pitch, and that's going to be a pop-up. Rodriguez over quickly. He slides down and he gets the catch. Man, what a play from Andy Rodriguez. And nothing in the first for Philadelphia. Let's go to the second as Wyatt Freehand has really been on a tear as of late as you've seen. And he's going to rip a single here for a base hit. You know, single for a base hit, obviously the same thing. But he has been on an absolute tear. And that is great to see. Just in time for hopefully the postseason where he had a great postseason last year. And here's Andy Rodriguez to the plate. Covering right there around 300. Ground ball, that's not what you want to see at all. 6-4-3, double play. And that is going to be, I would say, an inning killer. So nothing for us there in the second. Let's go to the bottom half of the second. CJ Crone coming to the plate. I'll say he went there. 3-2 pitch to Crone. And that's going to be a walk. So draws the walk here with one out in this second inning. And here comes Castellanos to the plate. You know what he can do. He can crush the ball as well. Right now at 36 home runs in the top 10 in the NL. And down the line, that's going to be a fair ball. Gilbert's going to be up with it with the good speed over. So at least hold it to a single. So instead of second and third, just yeah, first and second. Just one man in scoring position here for Brandon Marsh. Now obviously with this Philadelphia team, even a guy at first is in scoring position, even at home plate with the way they hit the ball. 3-1 count here to Marsh. And this one is, looks like it's going to drop in. Bader over, he's got it. One's going to score over to third base is Castellanos, and there you go. So first and third now here in this second inning. And I would have to say we might have a short lease with these pitchers because these are pretty much almost like playoff games. We got to win these games. And that's what you want to see. Ground ball. Cruz over to Johnson. Over to first. Got him. Double play. Keeps it at a one-run game. All right. That's what you want to see. Get out of that jam. Not a whole lot of damage done. And let's go to the third. Here comes Connor. Joe, and he rips this one deep into left field. It's carrying. Will it have enough? And it will. Connor Joe, the absolute playoff hero for this Pittsburgh squad last year, was just unbelievable and hopefully showing it again home run here to tie this game up at one apiece Connor Joe comes through once again it's just every time he is up there he just seems to perform and I try to get him in as much as possible either way I just gonna do everything I can to keep Connor Joe on the team because he just he just performs all the time he is absolutely amazing so now two away here in this fourth inning here comes Andy Rodriguez to the plate Rodriguez is going to get a hold of that one. That one's going to get down for possibly extra bases. It is cut off. Here comes Rodriguez in the second base. Throw is offline. So he has himself a two-out double. 
here in the fourth. Trying to get a two-out base hit probably here from Gilbert to give us the lead. Pitch to Drew Gilbert. Hits this one, and that's going to get down for a fair ball. Rodriguez will be onto the plate. He's going to score. Gilbert on his way to second base, and the young hitter's coming through here in the fourth to give us the lead. That'll be the big thing. You can see Gilbert with 37 doubles this year. Obviously, we have a young team. We're going to have to rely on these guys to come through in key situations in playoff situation, you know, that's what we got to rely on. I think we got the guys, we have the trust for them to do it. As Connor Joe rips this one into deep center. Marsh can't come up with it. That's going to be another double. And there you go. Back to back to back doubles here in the fourth inning. Gives us a two run lead, three to one. Connor Joe once again. I wasn't sure if that was going to get out of here. Thought maybe Marsh could get it. Just didn't have enough. Right over his glove there. And now Quinn Priester is going to work with a 3-1 lead. Ground ball here from Schwarber. Hayes up with it over to first, and he's got him there. Schwarber with that sneaky speed. He's, you know, he, he's a stout guy. And there's no doubt about it. But you're thinking, ah, he can't be that quick. But he runs better than you think. So one-two pitch here with one away. And this one hit deep into center field. But we got the gold glover Bader back there. And he has got that one easily. Runs that one down. So two away, here comes Castellanos to the plate. Obviously the single, had the run scored. And he'll take the pitch there for a strike. One, two pitch. See if Priester can have a one, two, three, fourth. And man, oh, that was a little odd looking, but he, he goes. Strike three, we'll take it out of the fourth. Let's go to the fifth inning. Suarez still in the mound here for Philadelphia. Base it up the middle from Tamar Johnson. We'll see how long they... Stay here with Suarez. Obviously, same thing for them. These are playoff games, so you got to be short with pitchers and try to shut stuff down quickly. Here comes Cabrian Hayes to the plate. 0 for 2 so far in this game with one away here in this fifth inning. And that's going to get through for a base hit. Tell you what, if you need a base hit, uh, Hayes is your man. Just unbelievable. Obviously, 99 contact versus lefties. He can just absolutely... Get you a base hit whenever you need it. As here comes Cruz to the plate. Works it to a 2-2 count. One away just here in this fifth inning. Pitch from Suarez. And Cruz ground ball. 5-4-3 double play. It is tough to double them up, but they get them there. So kind of squandered that opportunity there in the fifth. Still just a two-run lead, but Priester, you know, looking good. He might get into a jam or two, but he gets out of it. And one pitch here to Stott. And ground ball. Cruz up with it. He's going to bobble it, and that'll be safe there at first base. So an E6 on Cruz. That's all right. You know, don't let that get to you. Just make a good pitch here. Maybe you can get a double play, and you don't even really have to worry about it. So that's going to be 0-2 count. Maybe just put him away here. Ground ball. That's what you want to see. Mancini up with it. Over to Cruz. Back to first base. That is perfect job. Nice job from Quinn Priester because those errors definitely can get to you sometimes and an inning can just get away from you. But great job by the youngster there. Just getting the double play ball. And now working in the sixth inning. And that's going to be a ground out by Bohm. So two outs here in this sixth inning. And here comes Bryce Harper to the plate. He's 0 for 2 so far in this game. And Harper's going to pop this one up. Hayes racing over, trying to get it, and Hayes won't bring it down. Close. 2-2 Two -two pitch now to Harper. Takes that one inside. Schwarber on deck. Rather not walk Harper here. Let's even get him. He'll foul away that changeup. Not obviously an easy hitter to put away. That is for sure. 3-2 once again. Swing and a miss on the changeup. Well, out in front this time. Great job from Priester. Gets out of it. All right. That's a great start from Quinn Priester. All right, that is that is great to see. Because I'm thinking about the rotation even next year. I'm still thinking about next year, too, and even though we're not done this one. And I just want to trust in these young guys. You know, we got Santana coming back, Priester, Solomedo. I want to I want to put these guys in the rotation and see what they have. I really think they're going to do well. So that is awesome to see. Base hit there to lead off the seventh. Here comes Tamar Johnson. And yeah, that circle change got us a little bit out in front. That was not a not a very good looking swing. 0-2 pitch now. 
to Johnson. And this one's going to be a ground ball, but it's bobbled there at third base. Could have been easily a 5-4-3 double play, but now everybody is safe. Let's see if that comes back to haunt them. It didn't us. We got, uh, we got out of it, so we'll see what happens here. Hayes, that's going to probably be two. Yep. Man, what is with us in the double plays today? This time a 4-6-3 double play. And here comes Cruz to the plate. Still not out of this. He can obviously you know what O'Neill Cruz can do. 1-1 one, one pitch here to Cruz. Just need a base hit. Knock in another run. Give us a three-run lead. That one hangs up. And that's exactly what we're going to get. That, that is like an EFIS pitch. That circle change, it's running from anywhere from like 66 to about 68 miles an hour. It is so slow. I cannot tell you how long I have to wait back on to swing. It's crazy slow. And then he throws like 94. It's ridiculous. As that's a ground out, but O'Neill Cruz comes through for the run. But yeah, it's it's not easy. That's So here comes Wandy Peralta out of the bullpen so far in three games after coming up. Two and two-thirds inning. Hasn't allowed a run. Hasn't allowed a hit to lefties. Obviously, with Brock Burke going down with injury, Peralta now our only lefty out of the bullpen. Here comes Kyle Schwarber. He's going to fly this one to left. Gilbert's going to be underneath of it, and he's got it. Obviously, Peralta, he was on this team last year out of the pen. He's got some really good stuff. High fastball velocity, 95. Couldn't get it up to around 97. Very good sinker. And there it is right there, 3-2 sinker, and it gets him looking for strike three. Two away now in the seventh inning. Here comes Castellanos to the plate. And they're going to say he won on the fastball high. Back-to-back -back K's. Easy one, two, three for Peralta in the seventh. All right, let's head to the eighth. Connor Joe coming up. Triple shy of the cycle. That's what we're looking for here. I'm going to go if we're going to... Well, well, <laughs> just as I'm saying, hey, I'm going to risk it for a triple... Don't have to worry about that because he just knocks it out of the yard. Second home run of the game for Connor Joe. You have yourself a game, man. Have yourself a game. Tenth home run of the season for him. He uh, He's like, hey, what, what, what month is it? September? October? Yeah, okay. I'll make sure this bat's on fire. And that's what's happening here. Connor Joe knocks it out of the yard. 5-1 lead. Let's go to the ninth inning now. As that's going to be a base hit for Trey Mancini. Trying to add more insurance here in this ninth inning. Build this lead to where it's no really big deal. As now Tamar Johnson comes to the plate. 1-0 pitch to Johnson and rips that one. Absolutely foul. Circle change just hanging there in the middle of the plate. Just in front of it. That's all right. 1-1 one, one pitch. And this one hit well, deep into left field. Will it carry? The, the, that area's been carrying out here, and it will. Tamar Johnson, 20th home run of the season for him. Adds this to a 7 now. One lead here in this ninth inning. And I would say we pretty much got this in the bag. You can see down below we have a one and a half game lead over the Cubs. Now with a win here, would go up to 2. And obviously head to the ninth. There you go, strike 3. To Bryce Harper, Loisica with the strikeout. And there you go. 8-1 victory. We would add one more in the ninth. And now we've taken the first two games of the series. Quinn Priester cannot complain. Fantastic game. Goes seven strong. Great job from him. Connor Joe, two home runs, four five, three ribbies. Great game. Yeah, Priester, six innings. Not seven, six innings, two hits. One earned four case for Priester. All right, looks like our AAA has won the International League Championship game, so they'll be moving on there. We're going to try to sweep the Phillies here. But it doesn't look like we're going to get the job done unless something changes here in the later innings. Down 4-1 to one in the top half of the eighth inning. Get a run in the eighth. Get a stop there in the ninth. And let's go to the ninth inning. Here comes Tamar Johnson to the plate to start off this night. Down a couple runs. We have the bats to obviously a bloop and a blast, and we're tied up just like that. 2-2 two -two pitch here to Johnson. Up the middle, base hit. So Tamar Johnson's going to lead off this ninth inning. Get the uh, tying run to the plate. See, the Orioles, it says below, have clinched the ALEs, so they are in. 
Here comes O'Neal Cruz to the plate. Rain falling. Uh, that's hit at first base. That is going to be trouble. That's going to be a double play. Man, that's going to hurt. So now two away. It's up to Wyatt Freehand here to continue this ball game, or it looks like Philadelphia is going to take the final game of this series. And I'll, you know, we'll take that call. 2-1 pitch here to Freehand. Up the middle, ground ball, should be playable, over to first, and that is going to do it for this game. We're going to lose this one 4-2, to two, and we'll see where that puts us in the standings. Obviously, we had a two-game lead coming into this game. Question is, what did Chicago do? With that three-game set, we'll see what happens here. So, looks like our AAA team won the national championship. There you go. I mean, they were outstanding the entire year. So much talent on that team. So this three-game set here against Chicago when we have a two-game lead. So they lost, and that means we have clinched a play a postseason appearance. So we're in regardless. But with that two-game lead, all we need to do is win this game. We win this game, it's over. It doesn't matter if we lose the last two. It is over. So let's get into this game against the Cubs. You win, you have clinched the division. That's what we want here in this ball game. We don't want to let this go any further. Now, the question is, anybody out there, I'll answer it right away. It's kind of rhetorical. But do you remember the last time the Pittsburgh Pirates won the National League uh, Central? I'll give you a couple seconds. It's Tamar Johnson's to the plate. They never have. They have never won a division title. Now, NL East back in the day before they realigned the divisions, the last one was 1992. They have never won an NL Central title. I know it will say below. You'll see it here. Possibly I saw it soon, but it says we're going for two straight. We didn't win the division title last year. We were in the wild card. But we have a chance to do something this Pirates franchise has uh, never done. You can see it right there. Pirates clinched second. We've never, we didn't clinch it last year. We were a wild card team. But... Yeah, there's never been a Central Division title for the Pirates. Never. So, we're trying to make history in this game right now and get this one done. That's just crazy to think. They have never had a Central Division. That's wild. And I look up these stats sometimes because obviously you want to, you know, don't always know and you want to be correct with them. Look it up and it's just like, I can't believe it. What a catch there at third base. We got to get back. We got to get back. We're going to get doubled up here. Now the throw is offline, so we're safe at first. Whoa, but what a catch there at third. But, yeah, it's just it's wild to think about. I mean, when a franchise is that bad, your last division title was, you know, over 30 years ago and in a division that doesn't even exist anymore. Crazy. Or at least you weren't even part of that division. That's the whole thing. Everything was realigned. It's crazy to think about. We're trying to get it done here. Trey Mancini, former Cub. He would love to put his former weight, former team away. Hits this one deep in the left field. Back it goes, and it's gone. Trey Mancini, three-run shot here in this first inning. Couldn't ask for a better start, especially from Trey. Man, I'm sure he was upset that they let him go last year after really a pretty good season. Man, I, I will try my best to retain him. I know he is going to dip a little bit in, you know, he's going to regress for sure. And we have some guys that probably need to get more playing time. But, man, it seems like in the big spots, we're seeing Trey Mancini and Connor Joe really come up with uh, some big-time hits. You see that veteran presence. And there's this Chicago's Cub lineup, six in the NL and run. So they have a you know, pretty good offense. As here comes Luis Ortiz. So Ortiz gets a 1-2-3 first. Ortiz has been so good. Now, his only deficiency is he's really only giving you probably six. Most of the time, only five innings. But he's going to give you a solid five. And then with the bullpen that we have, that's really all you need. You give us some solid five innings. We go to the pen for the final four. We can shut you down. Here comes Fran Merrill Reyes to the plate. Obviously, we know him from Atlanta over to first base. And there's a 1-2-3 second. So, nice job from Ortiz. And they're staying pretty aggressive here so far. So, the pitch count for Ortiz, pretty low at the moment. It's Tamar Johnson gets a hold of that hanging slider. Deep into right field. This one's going to go. 
Tamar Johnson. Another home run. Doesn't matter if you throw him lefties or righties. He's going to crush it out. 21st of the season for him. And we're looking pretty good here early on. Everything looking good. Just hopefully it continues that way. Hey, if there's any other team that you're facing that has, you know, bad luck and pressure games or big time games, I'll tell you what, this Cubs, <laughs> Cubs, Cubs team is one of them. Obviously winning the World Series a few years ago, but, um, you know, that's a history of just failure. As Ramon Urias rips that one deep, and that one's gone. So the ball is just flying out of the park here so far in this game, and got some kind of um, Charlie Brown dancing going on there. Yeah, if you know what I'm talking about, obviously the Charlie Brown Christmas thing where they're just dancing around doing some wild dancing. That's kind of what it looked like there. Is this one's ripped for a base hit? I'd like to see more of that. I would like to see more, you know, celebration. I like when they kind of get out of the dugout after a big hit. That's cool to see. That uh, that just adds just a lot more to games. I mean, that's I did see that in this year's Madden that they're going to probably add more of that, which should always be in the game. I just don't understand. As Ortiz is going to get Cooper there for the strikeout, but always awesome to see more of that stuff. It just adds to it. Here comes Dancy Swanson. 3-2. That's going to get through for a base hit. See if they send the runner. They will. Connor Joe up with it. Throw to the plate. It's going to be offline. And the Cubs add another one. So, with this offense of Chicago, you know they can rack up some runs. Now it's just only down two. And still just one away here in this third inning. As Gurriel's going to go down looking. Nice pitch there from Ortiz for strike three. And now a chance to get Nico Horner here to get out of this third. Now you can see the pitch counts up there. Takes the pitch down low. Now up to 50 pitches here. Not out of the third yet. Pitch number 51. Should get him out. Hayes pop up underneath of it. And he's got it there for out number three. So the Cubs add a couple. Get it within two. And let's go to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Still 4-2. 2-1 count. Suzuki's there. Going to foul that one away. 2-2 two -two here from Ortiz. Pitch. Hit well, deep into right field. Connor Joe over. He's not going to be able to get it. He's going to hit off the ivy, ivy there. Joe up with it. Suzuki on his way to third base. Throw from Johnson. Not in time. And he's got a one-out triple here in the fourth inning. So the Cubs just right back into it. And look at Reyes' average in scoring position. 348. He is killing it this year. We're going to try to lower it for him. One, two, pitch. Strike three. He looks at the circle change. Really wasn't even that great of a pitch. Kind of left over the middle of the plate, you know, knee high. And he just didn't go for it. But Peterson with a great grab in there left in the inning. So the one-out triple by Suzuki goes nowhere. Great job from Peterson. Laying out, making a good grab there. Still four to two. Let's go to the fifth. Johnson rips this one. Man, that is scalded, man. That is getting into right field. And Johnson on his way to second base. He's on his way to third. Here comes the throw. It's going to be not in time. And Johnson with a triple. Tamar Johnson, you can see he was second in the NL with doubles. But he didn't want two. He wanted three. And now Hayes, this fly ball into center field. That's going to be enough. On his way to the plate, and we'll get this to a three-run lead, 5-2 to two here in this fifth inning. And let's go to the fifth. This could be, obviously, Ortiz's last inning. This is kind of where he runs out of gas. Ground ball over to first, and that is it for the fifth. Now, he's at around 75 pitches. We'll see if we bring him back. We'll see. Maybe we'll give him a chance in the sixth. As Wyatt freehand to the plate. And, man, that's, that's a long foul ball. Absolutely ripping that foul ball. 2-2 two -two pitch. Oh, man. That's another one. That was a hanging curveball. Hanging slider right there in the zone. Man. And he rips another one. Man, Wyatt freehand has had three crazy foul balls here. 3-2. And hits this one hard as well, but this one is going to be in fair play, and it's going to get out of here. I, hey, I'm not surprised. I just saw those three foul balls. 
And the power that this guy has, I mean, that was on an absolute line to left field. I'd watch it if you're out there in the left field bleachers because that was just crushed. And free in with a home run. Builds this lead back of the four. And let's go down to the sixth. Bottom half. We got Ortiz still in the game. Now, maybe I'll give him a batter or two here, and that might be it. Base hit, Nico Horner, and that might be it. So I think that'll be it for Ortiz. He goes five plus innings. Kind of what he usually does. Only allows two. And here comes Ronzi Contreras. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, why in the world are you bringing this guy out of the bullpen and the, in a situation like this? This guy has just been awful the entire season. But this is what he could do out of the bullpen. I don't know what it is. We've had starts with him. It's hit or miss, and a lot of times it's miss. But we've had plenty of time with him in the bullpen, and he's very good out of the pen. 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss on the slider for Suzuki for strike three. So two away here in the sixth inning. Reyes to the plate. Swing and a miss there on the high fastball. Let's go. Curveball maybe away. And we'll make sure he doesn't go anywhere. Maybe go slider away. Let's go slider away this time. There you go. Strike three to Reyes. So strikes out the side, Contreras. I mean, I guess that's what happens after you come out of that bullpen. Really, all you need is two pitches. As this one hit deep into center field, it's going to be off the wall. Grandel's going to be on his way to second base. He's going to slide in there. Even he's having a... Uh, doing it so far in this game. Fifth double of the year for him. Trying to just keep with this lead. Get this victory. And Johnson, base hit. I think he's actually now a double shy of the cycle. I think he is. Is Grandel's going to score? Now up to a five-run lead here. Seven to two in the seventh. Yeah, maybe if we can get him one more base hit. See if we can get him a double and get that cycle. I mean, Connor Joe must have it the last time. It was a triple short. So two times in this episode, we've already had, already had uh, chances at two cycles. One, two pitch now to Cruz. That's going to get through for a base hit. That's going to score one. Here comes the plate. The plate for a run number two. And he's going to be gunned down as Hayes at the plate. But at least Johnson came in and scored. So 8-2 game. And we'll go down to the seventh inning with one away. 2-2 two -two pitch here to Garrett Cooper. Man on first base. Pitch. Ground ball. Johnson. Got it. Makes the throw back to Cruz. Over to first base. Gets Cooper in time for that 4-6-3 double play. Contreras gets out of the eighth. And now let's go to the ninth inning. 8-2 lead. Three outs away from clinching this division. There's out number one. Contreras just... I don't know what it is with him in the bullpen. Just It's just a, like a different guy. Here comes Suzuki to the plate. Ground ball. Cruise up with it. Over to first. Got it for out number two. All right. One out away here from clinching this division. One, two pitch to Reyes. And he's going to take this one for up high for a ball. We got him on that slider low and away last time. Let's try it again. Two, two. Works again. Strike three. And that is a National League Central Division title. So no, uh, we're in the playoffs. There's no doubt about it. And we're going to get some home games out of it. Central Division title. Nice job. Fantastic season. We've accomplished our first goal. Obviously, second goal now is going to be winning that World Series. So goal number one. Click that off. There you go. You know, obviously after last year, that final month of the season, being under 500, looks like we're just going to just miss out. We're right there on the edge, the cusp of getting to the playoffs. And we just had a insane run. And, you know, we make the playoffs, get to the NLCS, just a few games away from the World Series. And coming into this season, we had high expectations. We thought we could win this division. We didn't think it was a strong division. And we found out it really isn't. But still, you don't want to be disappointed. This franchise has been very disappointed for years. Obviously, never getting a Central Division title. And 
We had our ups, ups and downs of the season. It started off really bad. It wasn't looking good, but we turned it around. And there you go. We're division champs. Cruz is going to lead us with home runs, 28 on the season. Wyatt Freehand ended up with number two, number 22. So, I mean, he still got 526 at bats. He missed some time, obviously, in AAA. Played 128 games, so he still got to get that average. Average got up, and the one base did. So he was sitting around, obviously, like 215, and one base was around 260. So he did get that up there, just hoping to keep like, working on that discipline so he can draw some walks next year. I know his war is at negative 1.6, but I think 26, it's only his first real full season. There's still a lot of potential there, and his power is just absolutely ridiculous. We just have to work on the plate discipline. Drew Gilbert had 12 home runs. Davis, obviously, 12, but he's probably out for the rest of the season, I would think. Cruz led us with 99 RBI, man, one short. Still looking around at a 100 RBI there. Uh, let's see. Bader led us in stolen bases. He had Johnson at 302. Led us. Connor Joe at 292. Rodriguez at 291. Look at his stats going up. That is awesome to see. So in 30 games, he had 10 doubles, 6 homers, 23 RBI. He did strike out 21 times when he walked him twice. But still, 291 average, 817 OPS. He had a war of 1.3. So I still think a great, really, you know, it's a little stretch from only 30 games. But he... he that's what I'm saying with positions with Trey Mancini earlier. It's like, you know, Henry Davis is going to be back. Uh, Rodriguez is going to stay on this team. You know, where do guys go? We'll see. I don't know. I would think Trey Mancini probably thinks he's good enough to have a starting spot. So, I don't know. He could still be at first in freehand DH. But we'll see. War is going to be Tamar Johnson, 4.7. Cruz with a 4.4 and Bader. 4.2 Bader just man that fielding alone just is so much worth everything it's so much it's so good Gilbert ended up with 2.9 ended up with 287 average I still think we'll see where he lands in rookie of the year he's got to be close as for pitching yeah we saw 20th victory for Pablo Lopez he did not get any more in the end of the season but he ends up with a 20 and 10 season best of his career Malley with 11 Waka with 10 Luis Ortiz ended up with 10 Priester with nine so, we're just hoping these, you know, Ortiz, I think, is going to have a shot at the rotation again next year. Same with Priester, Bubba Chandler. We'll see where Solimento, Solibeto comes. And, obviously, Pablo Santana will be back. Um, it's going to be a lot of young guys next year. There is no doubt about that. But, I think, you know, with more than likely, I would say this is probably the final year of Michael Waka. I mean, I think our rotation is still going to be strong. It's just going to be a lot of young arms, but I trust in it. I trust in it for sure, and then that's why I just want to build a strong bullpen as well because if you have a strong pen behind them, it just you know gives that pitcher a little, at least confidence that, hey, I can go out there, try to do my stuff. You know, I don't have to go crazy. I can go five or six innings. That's fine. Pen comes in, does the work, and um, yeah, I want to give all these guys a shot. 26 quality starts for Pablo Lopez, four complete game shutouts. Uh, great season for him, I think. Probably going to win the Cy Young, I would think. We'll see what happens. Barlow with 24 holds. Uh, Loiska and Burke there with 13. Six blown saves. Let's see. War. Yeah, Lopez with a 5.4 war. Malley with a 2.1 Waka there. Uh, go down the list. Loiska. So, I mean, not bad, but yeah, Lopez. Fantastic. Let's go to League Leaders. Let's see. McNeil led with a 307 average. Johnson, number, number five, hit 302. I actually thought it would be an average higher than that. That's interesting. I think home runs are down as well. That's the one thing I did see earlier, that home runs were way down. Gilbert there at number eight in doubles. Tamar Johnson was right up there as well. And O'Neill Cruz, yeah, we were a double machine and triple machine. Gilbert and O'Neill Cruz with 10 each. So, we might be a little low in home runs, but, man, we, we make up with it with extra base hits. Yeah, 37 home runs. That is interesting that that's the lead. Nobody even hit 40 in the NL. Man, that just seems really low. Acuna leads with 118 RBI. Austin Riley, so the Braves just... Man, okay, two guys right there. Gavin Lux with runs. Stolen basic, Garrett Mitchell with 31, which same thing kind of seems 
A little low to me. I would think somebody would get in the 40s. COPS. Anybody down here? Cruz with 14. Uh, Tamar Johnson right there at 17. Obviously, add some more home runs to the list. They'll get it. Pablo Lopez does lead the NL and wins. 20 wins on the season. Kyle Wright right there at 18. Uh, anybody else on our Yeah, we're not going to have anybody else on our list. That's for sure. Evan Phillips, 56 saves. He'll probably win, obviously, reliever of the year. So I'm trying to see starting pitchers that might possibly beat us out for a Cy Young. But I don't know. I don't really see anybody. Otani and Spencer Strider tie for strikeout leaders. 228. Otani just continues to kill it. Uh, complete yank. Lopez is right there. Number two. So I think... I would think we'll check, we'll check the awards here in a minute. I think he definitely is a Cy Young winner. Right there in war. No doubt it. Lindor, 7.3 war. Got anybody close here? Tamar Johnson at 4.7. He's in the top 15. Cruz, top 20. So, two guys there. Let's go to the American League. Let's take a look. Bregman at 335. See, that seems more of like a, a hitting title average, not 308. So, the National League's a little bit down. Yeah, the AL has some... They got some teams. I mean, the Dodgers are obviously the best team in baseball, but, man, the AL has just been top-heavy for sure. You have 53 home runs. Still only two other guys over 40. Jackson Holiday hit 38 home runs this year. So he'll definitely be rookie of the year, no doubt about it, in the AL. Jordan Alvarez leads with 139. RBI. Let's take a look at him. Mike Trout. So I want to see where Trout is here, career. Let's see. So he has 479 home runs, so he'll get 500 next year. 1,200 RBI. He's almost got 400 doubles. Career average of 304. Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody knows he's a Hall of Famer. How many hit? Yeah, so he's almost there at home runs. He's right there. He'll probably get 500 next year. Man, one of the greatest players ever to play baseball. There is no doubt about that. Savale and Quantrill lead. Uh, well, Savale is going to end uh, lead and wins with 18. But yeah, that Guardians team, phew, they are so good. Um, they're going to be the favorites, I would say, in the N in the AL with you know the Dodgers being the favorite. That might be your collision course right now for the World Series. We're going to hope to uh, mess that collision course up. Manoa leads in that stat, and I tell you what, talk about a guy who's completely lost it, Alex Manoa, in real life. Wow, I don't know. I guess that pitching clock just totally just messed with them. Um, yeah, Jackson Holiday, insane. But Trout with a nine plus war, it's crazy. MVP Ronald Acuna Jr. I mean, that's pretty. Yeah, he's outstanding. Pablo Lopez, there you go. We got a Cy Young winner here in Pittsburgh. That is cool to see. Phillips reliever of the year, rookie of the year goes to Ryan Ward. So Freehan and Gilbert were two and three. Ryan Ward. Yeah, I guess. Man, that's disappointing. I was hoping... I thought Gilbert would get it. Just the season he has had, Spain with fielding, but not in the cards. We're 2-3, and three, but still, they had great, he had a great season, no doubt about it. Uh, Any gold glove. But he didn't win a gold glove. So, nice job for Drew Gilbert winning that gold glove. That is awesome to see. Tamar Johnson's going to win himself for Silver Slugger there at second base. So, let's go to the AL. Let's see what we got. We got Jordan Alvarez is going to win the MVP in the AL. Carlos Rondon wins the uh, Cy Young. 16-10, 3.12 ERA. I mean, I guess. Um, rookie of the year, Jackson Holiday. Kobe Mayo actually finished second. So, the Orioles just got, you know, they have so much talent. Rushman winning the gold glove. I mean, yeah, they're... We'll see what they do in this postseason. Obviously, the first postseason they've been in for a while. So, got all that talent. What's going to happen? I still think they probably need a pitcher or two. That's for sure. So, they might be on the open market for pitching come postseason. We'll see. But they won the AL East 88-74. Four-game win over the uh, Rays, who didn't make it. The Yankees and Rays actually had the same record. I'm surprised there's no game. Guardians, obviously, just dominated the division. But it says the Rays are in. Yankees, there was nothing. Interesting. Maybe they just did a straight tiebreaker. Huh. Astros win the West. So, yeah, it's the Rangers, Angels, and Rays. Interesting there. I mean, maybe they just did. Maybe they had the tiebreaker because they're the same division. I don't even know about that. Uh, I think they would have a game maybe, but guess not. Braves win that division. Phillies are in. We win the division. And the Central Cubs are in. 
And the Dodgers obviously win the division with the Giants are in. So the Padres are the one that missed out. The Phillies were uh, half game out. They got right back. And that's who we're facing. We just saw Philadelphia. That's who we're facing in round number one of these playoffs. Looks like Tampa Bay beat Baltimore. And Texas beat the Angels in their wild card. So it's Texas, Cleveland, Tampa Bay, Houston, San Francisco, and L.A. And then we're taking on the Phillies. So that is going to be... The National League Divisional Series taking on the Philadelphia Phillies, a team we just saw. We took two out of three from, and hopefully we can get it done. Hopefully we beat this Phillies team, because you know what we want. We want to see that Dodgers team. We want another another shot at that team in the NLCS, because we can get the job done, and we want to get to this World Series and get this trophy, get this championship for this Pittsburgh Pirates franchise. But that is going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support. I appreciate it so much. You guys are absolutely amazing. Just continue that like button. Subscribe for more Pirates franchise content. And coming up will be the playoffs. So you guys have a good one. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.